Hey there everyone, Ramesh here back again with another amazing course titled Spring Boot Rabbit MQ course. Well, what you will learn in this course? We'll begin with understanding the fundamentals of Rabbit MQ. First, we'll understand Rabbit MQ core concepts and Rabbit MQ architecture, such as we'll understand what is producer, what is consumer, what is queue, what is exchange, what is binding, what is routing key, and then what is message. Once we'll understand all these RabbitMQ core concepts, next we'll understand RabbitMQ architecture. Well, in a RabbitMQ architecture, basically we have a multiple components. Like we have producer, it will send a message to the RabbitMQ broker. And then we have consumer, it will consume that message from the RabbitMQ broker. We'll start with understanding all these RabbitMQ core concepts and architecture. Next, we'll learn how to integrate RabbitMQ in a Spring Boot project using Spring AMQP library. Well, Spring provides Spring AMQP library, which we can use to integrate RabbitMQ in a Spring Boot project. Well, here AMQP stands for Advanced Message Queuing Protocol, and RabbitMQ basically uses this protocol for messaging purpose. Well, once you learn how to connect your Spring Boot application with RabbitMQ server, Next, you will learn how to configure all these RabbitMQ components in a Spring Boot application. Well, you will learn how to configure queue exchange, binding between queue and exchange, you know, producer, consumer. All right. So you will learn how to configure all these RabbitMQ components in a Spring Boot application. Next, you will learn how to use message of type string for a communication between producer and consumer using RabbitMQ broker in a Spring Boot application. Next, you will learn how to use a message of type JSON for a communication between producer and consumer using RabbitMQ in a Spring Boot project. Well, in real-time project, we basically use a JSON message, you know, for the communication between producer and consumer, right? So in this course, you will also learn how to use a message of type JSON for a communication between producer and consumer using RabbitMQ in a Spring Boot project. Next, you will learn how to create a multiple queues in a RabbitMQ architecture. All right, so if you can see this architecture over here, you will learn how to create multiple queues in a RabbitMQ architecture, and you will also learn how to create a multiple consumers, which will subscribe to multiple queues. Okay, so this is a very, very important, and you will learn all this stuff in this course. All right, you will learn a lot about Spring Boot and RabbitMQ in this course. All right, I will see you in the course. Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, we'll take a look into what is RabbitMQ. Well, before we dive into what is RabbitMQ, let's first quickly understand what is message queue. Well, message queuing allows applications to communicate by sending messages to each other. The message queue provides a temporary message storage when the destination program is busy or not connected. Well, message queue is nothing but a queue. It provides a temporary storage for the messages. Well, the message queue is made up of producer, broker and consumer where the producer will produce the message and it will send that message to the message broker and consumer will consume that message from the message broker so this is how the message queue looks like and we can use a message queue for the asynchronous communication between multiple applications well here asynchronous communication meaning consider the producer is sending message to the message broker then producer don't have to wait for the response it can proceed with other remaining tasks Okay, so this is how the asynchronous communication happened between producer and consumer. All right, so basically message queue is widely used for asynchronous communication between producer and consumer. A producer can be a different application and consumer can be a different application. And basically we use a message queue for asynchronous communication between multiple applications. Now let's take a look into what is RabbitMQ. Well, RabbitMQ is nothing but a message queue that acts as an intermediary platform where different applications can send and receive messages. Well, RabbitMQ originally implements the advanced messaging queuing protocol that is AMQP. But now RabbitMQ also supports several other API protocols such as Stomp, MQTT and HTTP. Well, RabbitMQ is nothing but a message queue. It acts as an intermediary platform where different applications can send and receive the messages. Well, if you can see here, this is how the RabbitMQ in a nutshell looks like. It contains basically multiple components like producer, exchange, queue, and consumer. So we'll understand more about producer, exchange, queue, and consumer in upcoming lectures. 
just try to understand how the RabbitMQ looks in a net cell. Well, producer basically produce the message and it will send that message to the exchange and then exchange will basically use that message along with some setup rules to you know route that message to the queue and then consumer will basically consume that message from the queue all right so exchange and queue so these are the two component which are part of rabbitmq broker but producer and consumer can be different applications all right so producer is application that sends a message to the rabbitmq broker and consumer is the application that reads the message from the rabbitmq broker all right so this is how the rabbitmq works now let's take a look into why we use rabbitmq in a micro services RabbitMQ is one of the simplest freely available option for implementing messaging queues in your microservices architecture. Well, RabbitMQ is one of the you know popular messaging queue system that we can use in a microservices for asynchronous communication between multiple microservices. For example, if you can see this architecture over here, this architecture has three microservices like order service, stock service, and email service. And these microservices will communicate with each other using message broker. Message broker can be a RabbitMQ or Apache Kapka or any other message queues. Well, in this course, we'll learn how to use RabbitMQ as a message broker for asynchronous communication between multiple microservices. All right, so we'll learn more about RabbitMQ core concepts and architecture in upcoming lectures. All right, I will see you in the next lecture. Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, we'll take a look into RabbitMQ core concepts. Well, in order to understand RabbitMQ throughout this course, you should know the important RabbitMQ core concepts. All right, in this lecture, I'm going to cover important RabbitMQ core concepts. First, we'll take a look into producer. Well, producer is basically application that sends a messages. It does not send a messages directly to the consumer. It sends a message only to the RabbitMQ broker. Well, we'll understand what is the exchange and qubit later. Just try to understand what is the producer in this case. Producer is basically application that sends a messages. And the producer, it does not send a message directly to the consumer. It will send a message only to the RabbitMQ broker. And then consumer will read that message from the RabbitMQ broker. Next, what is consumer? Well, consumer is an application that reads a messages from the RabbitMQ broker. Well, whenever producer sends a message to the RabbitMQ broker, then consumer will basically read that message from the RabbitMQ broker. Well, there can be a multiple consumers that can you know subscribe to the RabbitMQ broker. For example, if you can see here, consumer one, consumer two, consumer three. These are the three consumers have subscribed to the RabbitMQ broker and whenever a producer will send a message to the RabbitMQ broker then all these consumers will read that message from the RabbitMQ broker all right I hope you understood what is consumer next what is queue well queue is basically a buffer or a storage in a RabbitMQ broker to store the messages well whenever a producer sends a message to the RabbitMQ broker that message will be first stored in a queue and then the consumer will read that message from the queue which is there in a RabbitMQ broker and we can create any number of queues in a RabbitMQ broker. Alright, just remember queue is nothing but a storage in a RabbitMQ broker to store the messages. Alright, it's pretty simple. Next, what is a message? A message is nothing but an information that is sent from producer to the consumer through a RabbitMQ. Well, message can be any type like message can be a string format, message can be a JSON, message can be a byte array, message can be a plain text, message can be HTML. All right. So just remember, message is nothing but information that is sent from the producer to the consumer through RabbitMQ broker. All right. Great. Next, what is exchange? Well, exchange, it acts as an intermediary between producer and queue. Instead of sending a message directly to the queue, a producer can send those messages directly to the exchange first and then exchange will basically route those messages to the respective queues. Alright, just remember exchange it acts as an intermediary between producer and queue and whenever producer sends a message to the exchange then exchange will basically use some setup rules to route those messages to the respective queue. Okay, we'll understand more about you know exchange and how it will route the message to the respective queues 
in a upcoming lectures next what is routing key well routing key is a key that exchange basically uses to route a message to the respective queues well routing is like address for the message well consider in a complex applications we have to use a multiple queues in a rabbitmq broker all right for example consider this diagram over here we have two queue q1 and q2 okay and whenever producer sends a message to the exchange then exchange basically don't know in which queue the message should be route right in that case exchange should use a routing key to route that message to the particular queue okay so producer will basically you know send a message along with the routing key so that exchange will basically use that routing key to route that message to the respective queues so just remember routing key is nothing but a key that exchange uses to route a messages to the respective queues all right so there should be binding binding between exchange and queue then only the exchange can able to route the messages to the respective queues right so that binding is done by routing key okay great next what is binding a binding is a link between queue and an exchange well exchange basically use a routing key to route a message to the respective queues right and this is nothing but a binding there should be a binding between exchange and queue then only the exchange can able to you know route a message to the respective queues all right so this comes into picture whenever we have multiple queues in a application all right just remember binding is nothing but a link between queue and exchange and this binding is done by using a routing key okay we'll understand more about these rabbit mq core concepts in upcoming lectures as well all right so these are the important rabbit mq core concepts that we frequently use throughout this course well we will understand more about these rabbit mq core concepts whenever we implement a rabbit mq in a spring boot applications all right great i will see you in the next lecture hi welcome back in this lecture let's take a look into rabbit mq architecture well in previous lecture we have understood some of the rabbit mq core concepts right in this lecture we will put together all these core concepts and we will understand rabbit mq architecture well if you can see here this is a typical messaging system architecture we have a producer and we have a consumer in between producer and consumer we have a message broker all right so the producer will basically send a message to the message broker and consumer will basically read those messages from the message broker all right so this is how the typical messaging system looks like but in case of rabbit mq messaging system architecture you can see there is a one more component called exchange okay so producer will basically send a message first to the exchange and then exchange will route that message to the queue and then consumer will basically consume or read that message from the queue okay so this is the simple rabbit mq architecture but in case of a complex application we need to create a multiple queues in a rabbit mq broker right so this is how the architecture looks like all right so this is a rabbit mq architecture with multiple queues well the producer will basically send a message to the exchange first and then exchange will basically use a routing key to route that message to the respective queues and then consumer will basically consume or read the message from the respective queues okay so this is how the rabbit mq architecture with multiple queues looks like well in this rabbit mq architecture the important component is exchange you need to understand how exchange works and how it will route a message to the respective queues okay so let me explain you with an example consider we have multiple queues in a rabbit mq architecture for example q1 q2 q3 and whenever producer want to send a message to the q3 then what it will do basically it will send a message along with the routing key to the exchange and then exchange will basically use that routing key to identify in which queue the message should be route okay consider we have routing key 3 then exchange will basically send that message to the q3 okay and consider producer want to send a message to the q1 then what it will do it will pass a message along with the routing key 1 then exchange will use that routing key 1 
and it will route that message to the q1 so in this way the binding or link should be established between exchange and q by using routing key okay we will understand more about this rabbitmq architecture whenever we implement rabbitmq in a spring boot application okay i hope you understood at a high level how the rabbitmq architecture with multiple queues looks like and in this course we are going to you know implement rabbitmq architecture with multiple queues okay great i will see you in a next lecture hi welcome back in this lecture we will install and set up rabbitmq using docker well you can also install and set up rabbitmq in your windows or linux or mac os but in this course i am going to use docker to quickly install and set up rabbitmq server well i assume that you have already installed a docker desktop in your machine well let's open the docker desktop for example if you open the docker desktop then it looks like this okay and you can go to the docker images docker containers all right now once you have a docker desktop in place then we can go ahead and pull rabbitmq docker image from the docker hub so go to the browser and in a new tab just type docker hub and hit enter and go ahead and click on the first link so this will navigate to the docker hub official website and in a search just type rabbitmq and hit enter and go ahead and click on this docker official image over here and just scroll down and here you can see supported tags and respect to docker file links well we're gonna use this rabbitmq docker image okay that is 3.10.5 management so make sure that you choose the rabbitmq docker image it contains a management tag because we're gonna use a rabbit rabbitmq management website to explore the rabbitmq so go ahead and choose this 3.10.5 hyphen management you know docker image so go ahead and copy this docker image name so i am going to copy it and just open the terminal well i am using mac operating system so i can use the terminal like this but if you are using windows then make sure that you open the command prompt so let me zoom this terminal little bit and just type the docker command that is docker followed by full followed by docker image name so just type rabbit mq colon and then followed by the image name that we have copied that is 3.10.5 hyphen management so this is the command it will pull this docker image from the docker hub and then it will save in a local docker desktop all right so just hit enter so if you can see the commands pulling from library slash rabbitmq okay so this will take a couple of seconds based on your internet speed and there we go so look at here the docker image is successfully downloaded from the docker hub now in order to verify it so go to docker desktop and go to images over here and here you can see the docker image name that is rabbitmq the tag is 3.10.5 hyphen management all right so whenever you pull the docker image from the docker hub you can verify that docker image by using this docker desktop like this well once we pull rabbitmq docker image from the docker hub and saved in a docker desktop locally then next we need to start this docker image in a docker container so you can also start this docker image in a docker container by using this option over here you can simply click on this run and go ahead and click on this run button over here so this will start this docker image in a new docker container okay but we're going to use a terminal i mean we're going to use a command docker command to start this docker image in a docker container so let me show you how to do it so just cancel it and go to the terminal and just type the command docker run followed by hyphen hyphen rm hyphen it hyphen p so here basically we are mapping and exposing the port 15672 so this port is for you know rabbitmq management website 
and this port is to connect rabbit mq you know client okay just remember here you can see two ports right 15672 so this port is for rabbit mq management website or rabbit mq management plugin and this port is for connecting our spring boot application with the rabbit mq broker by using rabbit mq client okay don't get confused with these two ports okay and followed by the docker image name all right so go ahead and hit enter so this will start this docker image in a docker container well if you can notice here in a log server startup complete four plugins started and these are the four plugins and within these four plugins this is a very important rabbitmq underscore management we will learn more about this rabbitmq underscore management plugin in the next lecture and again if you can notice here rabbitmq management plugin is listening port 15672 okay so if you can go to browser again and if you can just type here localhost followed by colon and then 15672 and hit enter so this will basically open rabbitmq management website or a plugin and we're going to use this rabbitmq management plugin our website to explore more about rabbitmq and rabbitmq concepts in the next lecture all right so this is how basically we can use a docker to quickly install and set up rabbitmq locally all right i hope you understood how to install and set up rabbitmq using docker all right i will see you in next lecture hi welcome back in previous lecture, we have installed and set up RabbitMQ using Docker. In this lecture, we are going to explore RabbitMQ management plugin. So if you can notice here, the RabbitMQ management plugin is started listening port 15672. And if you can go ahead and, you know, just type the URL localhost colon 15672, this will open RabbitMQ management plugin. So go to browser and in a new tab, just type localhost colon 15672 and this is the port basically the rabbitmq management plugin is listening okay so hit enter and by default the rabbitmq uses guest as a username and guest as a password so just go ahead and type guest over here as a username and guest as a password all right and go ahead and click on login so if you can see here this is the user interface for rabbitmq management and using this user interface you can go ahead and create the queue you can go ahead and create the exchange and you can bind the exchange and queue using you know routing key as well so let me show you how we can do that well let's begin with the connections tab over here so in the connections you can see all the tcp connections well whenever we connect our application with the rabbitmq server that entry you can able to see in the connections tab over here next comes channels so basically the producer and consumer will basically exchange a message over a channel okay so whenever we establish a connection that is tcp connection between producer and consumer using rabbitmq that entry you can able to see under channels tab okay so most of the time we'll focus on exchange and queues tab over here so go ahead and click on exchange tab and let's create a new exchange so you can see this option over here add new exchange so let's expand this add new exchange and let's give exchange name over here for example let's say exchange underscore demo and there are multiple types of exchanges for example direct pan out headers and topic so you know use by default direct exchange and then durability let's keep durable by default okay and you can also provide the arguments but i'm going to keep all the default values for this exchange as it is and go ahead and click on add exchange over here and as soon as you click on add exchange a new entry will be added here you can see a exchange underscore demo entry will be added in this table so go ahead and click on this exchange underscore demo okay and here we need to basically bind a exchange with a queue by using a routing key so now we have created exchange next we need to create a queue as well right so go ahead and click on queues tab over here so expand this add a new queue uh, you know tab over here and just give queue name something like q 
क्यू अंडर डेमो ओके एंड लेट्स कीप ऑल दीज वैल्यूज एज अ डिफॉल्ट एंड लेट्स क्लिक ऑन एड क्यू हो यर सो एज सुन एज यू क्लिक ऑन एड क्यू अ न्यू एंट्री विल बी एडेड इन अ टेबल ओके सो दिस इज द क्यू अंडर स्कोर डेमो क्यू सो गो एड एंड क्लिक ऑन दिस एंड यू कैन एक्सप्लोर मोर अबाउट दिस क्यू ओके सो लेट्स गो बैक टू एक्सचेंजेस एंड आवर एक्सचेंज दैट इज एक्सचेंज अंडर स्कोर डेमो एंड हियर वी नीड टू बाइंड एक्सचेंज विथ क्यू बाई यूजिंग राउटिंग की एंड हियर यू कैन सी द ऑप्शन एड बाइंडिंग फ्रॉम दिस एक्सचेंज टू क्यू सो वी हैव एक्सचेंज नेम्ड एक्सचेंज अंडर स्कोर डेमो एंड वी हैव अ क्यू नेम्ड क्यू अंडर स्कोर डेमो राइट एंड लेट्स पास द क्यू नेम हियर लेट्स ए क्यू अंडर स्कोर डेमो ओके एंड हियर वी नीड टू यू नो यू नीड टू पास द राउटिंग की फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट्स ए राउटिंग अंडर स्कोर की अंडर स्कोर डेमो सो दिस इज द राउटिंग की और राइट सो जस्ट रिमेंबर वी आर बाइंडिंग दिस एक्सचेंज नेम्ड एक्सचेंज अंडर स्कोर डेमो विथ अ क्यू नेम्ड क्यू अंडर स्कोर डेमो बाई यूजिंग राउटिंग की दैट इज राउटिंग अंडर स्कोर की अंडर स्कोर डेमो ओके ग्रेट नाउ नेक्स्ट वॉट विल डू विल बाइंड एक्सचेंज विथ अ क्यू बाई यूजिंग दिस राउटिंग की सो गो आइड एंड क्लिक ऑन दिस बाइंड ओके यू कैन सेबल यू कैन एबल टू सी एज सुन एज यू क्लिक ऑन बाइंड अ न्यू एंट्री विल बी एडेड ओवर हियर in a table okay so it means that this exchange is successfully bind to this queue by using this routing key if you want to unbind this link you can go ahead and click on this unbind button over here okay now go ahead and click on queues over here and go to queue underscore demo and you can able to see binding okay so now we have successfully bind this exchange with this particular current key using this routing key well whenever a producer sends a message to the exchange then exchange will basically use this binding to route that message to the respective queue so in order to demonstrate that what i am going to do is i am going to send a message to the exchange so go to exchange tab and go to our exchange that is exchange underscore demo and here we have option to publish the message to the exchange so go ahead and click on this publish here and whenever you know producer want to publish the message producer have to pass the routing key as well as the message so the routing key in our case we have given routing underscore key underscore demo right so make sure that you you know pass the correct routing key and in a, in a payload section we need to pass the message let's say hello world is the message all right now let's go ahead and let's click on this publish message and you can see the you know pop up here message published and just go ahead and close it and in order to verify this message is successfully routed to the queue or not so go to queues tab over here and go to our queue that is queue underscore demo and just scroll down and here you can see the option get message and you can see messages one it means that the message hello world that we have sent to the exchange is successfully routed to the queue well in order to view the message in a queue what you can do is you can just click on this get message it will show the messages in a queue for example hello world message right so we have sent this hello world message to the exchange and exchange basically used this routing key to route this hello world message to the queue right so we can able to see the message hello world in a queue now all right so this is how basically the flow goes all right the producer will basically send a message along with the routing key to the exchange and then exchange will use that routing key to route that message to the respective queue right so this is how the flow goes in a rabbit mq architecture all right i hope you understood how to use this rabbit mq management plugin to explore more about rabbit mq you know flow or architecture all right so you can go and create a multiple queues and multiple you know routing key to explore more about rabbit mq by using this rabbit mq management website or a plugin okay so this is a very useful rabbit mq management plugin that you can use whenever you use rabbit mq in a your project all right great i will see you in the next lecture hi welcome back in this lecture we will create and set up spring boot project in intelligent idea well we're going to use spring initializer 
to quickly create and bootstrap Spring Boot project and then we'll import that project in our IntelliJ IDEA. Well, let's head over to the browser, I mean a Chrome browser. Well, in a new tab, just type start.spring.io. This will bring up Spring Initializer. Well, Spring Initializer is nothing but a website or a web tool that we can use to quickly create and bootstrap Spring based applications. All right, let's go ahead and let's fill up all the information over here. So you can see here two types of projects, Maven project and Gradle project. We're gonna use Maven project. So let's keep Maven project as selected as it is. And here we have three JVM languages, Java, Kotlin, Groovy. We're gonna use Java. So let's keep, you know, JVM language that is Java as a selected. And here Spring Boot version, we're gonna use Spring Boot 3, that is 3.0.0 snapshot. Okay, so we're gonna use Spring Boot 3 in this course. And next, we're gonna fill up all the project metadata over here. So let's give group as net.java guides and then artifact something like Spring Boot hyphen rabbit mq hyphen tutorial and name is same as artifact and description let's give demo project for spring boot and rabbit mq and package name net.javagates.springboot and next packaging as jar and next java version 17 well make sure that whenever you use spring boot 3 you have to use java version 17 or later okay let's keep java 17 as selected over here next we need to choose the dependencies so go ahead and click on add dependencies over here and just type spring for rabbit so you can see here spring for rabbit mq starter dependency so this dependency is very useful okay so spring framework basically provide spring amqp you know library to work with rabbit mq for example just select this dependency and go to the new tab and just type spring amqp okay so spring team basically provides this spring amqp model to work with different messaging system that uses amqp protocol for example rabbit mq uses amqp protocol for messaging right so spring amqp model is basically an abstraction to implement different messaging solutions using different messaging systems uh, that uses amqp protocol all right so spring amqp project applies spring core concepts to development of amqp based messaging solutions it provides a template as a high level abstractions for sending and receiving messages okay by default this spring amqp supports rabbit mq as of now but it may support different messaging systems that uses amq protocol in future okay and if you can see different features like listener container for asynchronous processing of inbound messages rabbit template for sending and receiving messages rabbit admin for automatically declaring queue exchange and bindings so we're going to use rabbit template and rabbit admin in our spring boot application to work with rabbit mq by using this spring amqp project or library so just remember we're going to use spring amqp project or a module to work with rabbit mq using amqp protocol all right great let's go back to spring initializer and let's add few more dependencies like spring web starter dependency well we're going to create a rest api for that we're going to choose spring web starter dependency and also let's add lombok dependency well we're going to use a lombok library to reduce the boilerplate code all right so these three dependencies are enough as of now so let's go ahead and click on generate to generate this project as a zip file so go ahead and click on generate and notice here this spring boot project is downloaded as zip file let's open in a folder all right and let's extract the zip file well once you unzip this zip file next you need to import this project in the IntelliJ idea right so let me open the IntelliJ idea over here and here you can see the open option so go ahead and click on this open and navigate to the location where your spring boot application is downloaded in my case it is in a downloads folder and this is a spring boot rabbit mq tutorial so go ahead and select this folder and open it 
so this will open you know spring boot project in the IntelliJ idea let's wait couple of seconds because IntelliJ idea will download all the dependencies from the internet and it will set up the spring boot ap application properly in a IntelliJ idea so you can able to see the here resolving dependencies of this project now we have created and set up spring boot project in IntelliJ idea next we need to verify whether our setup is working properly or not in order to do that expand src folder expand main java and go to spring boot main entry point class and from here let's run our spring boot project so right click i mean click on this icon and then click on run and you can notice here our spring boot application is up and running on embedded tomcat server on port 8080 it means that we have successfully created and set up spring boot project in a IntelliJ idea in next lecture we will see how to connect our spring boot application with a rabbitmq server all right i will see you in the next lecture hi welcome back in previous lecture we have created and set up spring boot project in IntelliJ idea right in this lecture we will see how to connect our spring boot application with a rabbitmq server so so far we have rabbitmq server which is running in a docker container and we have spring boot project in a IntelliJ idea now we need to connect our spring boot application with the rabbitmq server once we do that then we can go ahead and create a queue exchange and binding in a spring boot application once we do that then next we create a producer and consumer all right so in order to establish the connection between the spring boot application and a rabbitmq server we're going to use spring boot auto configuration well spring boot auto configuration it helps us to reduce a lot of configuration okay so we get a connection to our rabbitmq broker on port 5672 using default username and password of guest okay we can use default you know username and password as a guest to connect our spring boot application with the rabbitmq server and in order to connect our spring boot application with the rabbitmq broker we need to use these properties spring.rabbitmq.host equal to localhost spring.rabbitmq.port 5672 spring boot rabbitmq username guest spring.rabbitmq.password guest so these are the default values basically okay and spring boot auto configuration basically you know uses these properties behind the scene to automatically connect our spring boot application with the rabbitmq server it means that we don't have to define these properties in our application dot properties file because spring boot will automatically use these default values to connect our spring boot application with the rabbitmq broker on port 5672 and uses the username and password as a guest okay but remember these default values works whenever you install rabbitmq locally in a development environment let's say if your rabbitmq broker is running on different machine then you have to provide these properties and you have to provide that machine ip address or the host name over here okay so make sure that whenever you deploy your rabbitmq broker or a server on production or in any different environment so make sure that as per the environment we have to you know provide the host name port username and password okay so these default things will work for local development but what if you want to deploy or if you want to set up a rabbitmq broker in a production then you have to configure these properties and you have to configure these property values as per the environment right so make sure that you remember all these things in order to connect your Spring Boot application with the RabbitMQ broker. Now let's go to Spring Boot project and go to application.properties file. And here what I will do, I will quickly paste these properties. That is host, localhost, port 5672, username guest, password guest. Now go to Spring Boot main entry point class and from here just run the Spring Boot project and let's see if there are any errors or not and there we go there is no errors it means our spring boot application is connected with you know uh, rabbitmq server which is running on port 506 5672 and if you comment out these properties let me quickly comment it and if you again rerun the spring boot application then our spring uh, spring boot application should have to connect to the rabbitmq server because spring boot auto configuration behind the scene uses 
all these default values to connect our Spring Boot application with the you know RabbitMQ broker. So let me run the Spring Boot application and there we go there are no errors it means that our Spring Boot application is successfully connected with the RabbitMQ broker. Well once Spring Boot application connects with the RabbitMQ server next we need to create a queue exchange and binding in a Spring Boot application right. In next lecture we'll see how to configure queue exchange and binding in a Spring Boot application all right I will see you in a next lecture. Hi welcome back. In this lecture we will see how to configure RabbitMQ queue exchange and binding in a Spring Boot application. Well if you consider our architecture over here we have different components like exchange, queue and binding using routing key right. So in order to configure RabbitMQ in our Spring Boot application we need to create a different component in our Spring Boot application. For example we need to create a RabbitMQ queue RabbitMQ exchange and binding between Q and exchange right so let's go and let's see how to configure these components in a Spring Boot application using RabbitMQ so it head over to the IntelliJ IDEA and let's create a configuration class and let's define different Spring Beans to configure RabbitMQ Q exchange and binding between Q and exchange so here First, what I will do, I will create a different packages first. Right click new and then package. Let's give package name something like config. And let's create a one more new package and let's call it as publisher. Within a publisher package, we create all the RabbitMQ producers. So let's create a one more new package. Let's call it as consumer. Within a consumer package, we keep all the RabbitMQ consumers. Let's create a one more package and let's call it as controller. Within a controller package, we keep all the Spring MUC controllers. Let's create a one more package. Let's call it as DTO. All right. And go to config package, right click on it, new, and then choose class. And let's give class name as RabbitMQ config. All right, perfect hit enter so this will create rabbitmq config class let's make this class as a spring java based configuration by using add configuration annotation so let's annotate this class with add configuration annotation from org.springframework.context.annotation package now this class becomes spring java based configuration class within this configuration class we can define all the spring beans well let's first create a spring bean to configure rabbitmq queue so within this configuration class here i am going to quickly write the comment spring bean for rabbitmq queue all right so let's create a spring bean public and then queue so make sure that you use queue class from org.springframework.amqp.core okay because we are using spring amqp module to work with a rabbitmq messaging system that uses amqp protocol isn't it so let's choose this queue class from this particular package and then let's give method name as queue and then return instance of queue here and we need to pass a queue name for example let's give queue name as java guides okay so let's make this queue name as a configurable configurable meaning we don't have to hard code this queue name in a code we need to externalize this queue name all right so let's define this queue name in application.properties file and let's use add value annotation to read this value from the application.properties file and then we'll pass that value to the this object okay so let me show you how to do it so here create an instance variable private string and let's say q okay and let's annotate this instance variable with at value annotation and then within double quote dollar within a curly braces let's give property name let's say rabbit mq dot q 
dot name next let's remove this hard coded value and let's pass q here okay next let's use this property in application dot properties file so let me copy this property name go to application dot properties file let me paste it over here and let me give property value to this property the q name we have given java guides right now we have used add value annotation to read this property value that is java guides here and then we pass this q to the this q class constructor okay so this is how we can dynamically pass rabbitmqq name to this object okay so once we define spring bean for rabbit q next we need to define a spring bean for rabbitmq exchange so let's do that public and then let's use the class that is topic exchange so make sure that you use topic exchange class from org.springframework.amqp.core package and let's give name method name as exchange and then return new and then use topic exchange class and let's pass you know exchange name to the constructor so let's say java guides underscore exchange is the topic exchange name okay again we don't have to hard code the exchange name we have to make it configurable right so here let's define the instance variable let's say private string and let's call it as exchange and let's use add value annotation and here is the syntax within a double quote dollar within a curly braces let's pass the property name that is let's say rabbitmq dot exchange dot name next let's remove this hard code and let's pass exchange variable okay and next let's define this property in a application dot properties file so go to application dot properties file over here and let's paste this key and just pass a value as java guides underscore exchange okay now we have configured exchange okay well notice here in order to make this method as a spring bean we have to annotate these two methods with the add spring bean annotation right so let's annotate this method with add bean annotation and make sure that you choose bean annotation from org.springframework.context.annotation package now this is the spring bean okay so this is how basically we create a spring bean using java based configuration so similarly let's annotate this method with add bin annotation now we have created these two spring beans one for q another for exchange next we need to bind this q with this exchange using routing key right so let's see how to do that so here let's create a one more method let's say public and then binding so make sure that you choose binding class from org.springframework.amqp.core package and let's say binding and here we're gonna basically use binding builder class to bind a queue with exchange using routing key so make sure that you choose binding builder class from org.springframework.amqp.core package and then let's use method bind so make sure that you choose this bind method over here so just call bind and then pass q here basically we are going to call q method so this q method we have defined over here next we need to call the method that is two so make sure that you use two method it has a exchange as a parameter so we need to pass exchange so here we have already exchange so let me pass this exchange here just call the exchange method so we need to bind this queue to this exchange by using routing key right so for that we're going to call with method so make sure that you choose this post with method that takes routing key as a string parameter type so here we need to pass the routing key so let's give routing key something like java guides underscore routing underscore 
key and then put the semicolon to end this statement all right so what we have done basically we have bind this queue to this exchange using this routing key okay next let's annotate this method with at bin annotation to make this method as a you know spring bean so here let me write the comment binding binding between q and exchange using routing key routing key perfect so here also let me write the comment spring bean for rabbit mq exchange all right perfect and if you can notice here we have provided a hard code value for routing key so let's make it configurable so in order to do that here let's again define the instance variable so let me copy existing one and paste it over here and let's give the variable name let's say routing key and let's give property name something like rabbitmq dot routing dot key okay and let's copy this property name and go to application dot properties file and paste it over here and let's give routing key name as java guides underscore routing underscore key okay and save this file and go back to rabbitmq config file config file and here just remove this hard code value and then just call routing key variable perfect so we have created a queue and exchange and then we have you know bind this queue with the exchange using this routing key all right so this is how basically we need to configure rabbitmq queue exchange and binding in a spring boot application and we have also you know made this, this queue name exchange name routing key name configurable by using add value annotation well apart from these three beans we need to also configure a couple of beans for example we need to also configure connection factory connection factory and we need to also configure rabbit template all right and also we need to configure rabbit admin so these are the basically infrastructure beans that required our spring boot application to work with rabbit mq broker but spring boot auto configuration will automatically configure these three beans for us we don't have to explicitly create spring bean or configuration for these three classes okay i hope you understood this point so just remember spring boot auto configuration will automatically configure these three infrastructure spring beans so that we don't have to manually create a configuration to configure these three classes okay all right just take a note of it spring boot auto configuration will automatically configure these infrastructure beans we don't have to explicitly configure these beans we just need to inject and we need to use these beans okay we'll see in upcoming lecture how we can use a rabbit template to send and receive the messages all right great i hope you understood how to configure rabbit mq q exchange binding in a spring boot application and spring boot auto configuration will automatically configure these infrastructure beans we don't have to manually write a code to configure these beans hi welcome back in previous lecture we have configured a rabbit mq q exchange and binding in our spring boot application in this lecture we will create a producer okay and then in next lecture we will create a rest api which will send a you know message to the producer and producer will send that message to the rabbitmq server all right in this lecture we will create a rabbitmq producer let's head over to the intellij idea and go to publisher package over here right click on it new and then choose java class and let's give class name something like rabbit mq producer and hit enter and let's annotate this class with 
at service annotation well once we annotate this class with at service annotation then this at service annotation will create this class as a spring bean and it will register in a spring ioc container okay so within this class let's write the logic to send a message to the rabbitmq broker so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to fetch exchange and routing key values from the application dot properties file so for that let's use at value annotation so let me first get the exchange exchange so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to use at value annotation within the workload dollar within a curly braces let's pass the property name so let me go to application dot properties file over here and let me copy this property name and the exchange value is java guides underscore exchange right so we can get this value by using this property key so let me go to rabbitmq producer over here and let me paste the key so similarly let me copy this and paste it over here so let me change to routing key and let me go to application dot properties file again let me copy this property key and let me paste it over here now we got a exchange and routing key values from the application dot properties file using add value annotation next we need to use a rabbit template to send the messages well as we know that spring boot will automatically configure a rabbit template for us we just have to inject and use it all right so let's use constructor based dependency injection to inject a rabbit template class so here first create an instance variable private rabbit template so make sure that you use a rabbit template from wg.springframework.amqp.rabbit.core package and this is the rabbit template and let's create the constructor right click generate constructor and then only choose rabbit template and click on ok we have now injected rabbit template in a rabbit mq producer class okay so this is basically parameterized constructor and whenever a spring bean has a only one parameterized constructor then we can omit this annotation that is at auto add annotation okay so we can ignore or omit this annotation because spring will automatically inject this dependency whenever it will find single constructor in the spring bean class all right perfect now we have rabbit template in place next we can use a rabbit template methods to send the messages to the rabbit queue or exchange so let me write the method here public wide and the method name let's say send message let's pass method parameter as message of type string well within a send message method we need to put a log statement right we just need to print the message so in order to do that first we need to create a logger so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a logger quickly private static private static final and make sure that you choose logger from org dot self 4j and then logger equal to logger factory dot get logger and then pass the class name that is rabbit mp producer dot class perfect now we have a logger instance so let's call the logger instance over here and then call its method that is input method and then we're gonna use string dot format method to dynamically pass the message so here i'm gonna say message sent and then just use placeholder percentage yes okay and then pass the message okay so this message will be dynamically replaced with this placeholder okay perfect next let's use a rabbit template method to send a message to the particular queue so let's call the rabbit template object and then let's call the method convert and send so make sure that you choose this method that is convert and send it has three parameters first one is exchange second routing key third is object okay so whenever we use this method to send a message to the queue we have to pass exchange and routing key all right so this exchange will basically use this routing key to you know route this particular object 
or a message to the queue all right i hope you got it so let's call this method and just pass the exchange so let's pass the exchange and then routing key followed by message okay perfect all right we are using convert and send method to send this message to this exchange and then exchange will basically use this routing key to route this message to the queue okay so this is the meaning of this particular method or api okay i hope you understood how to use this rabbit template method to send a message to the exchange and exchange will basically use this routing key to route this message to the queue okay this is pretty much how we basically write a rabbit queue producer in next lecture we'll create a simple rest api which will take a message from the client all right great i will see you in the next lecture hi welcome back in this lecture we'll create a simple rest api to send a message from the client let's head over to the IntelliJ idea and go to the controller package right click on controller package new and then choose java class let's give class name as message controller and hit enter all right now let's annotate this class with at rest controller annotation and also let's annotate this class with at request mapping annotation and let's define the base uri for this class so let's say slash api slash v1 and then within this class we're gonna write a simple rest api so before that we need to inject you know we need to inject rabbit mq producer so let's use constructor based dependency injection so in order to do that first we need to create an instance variable let's say rabbit mq producer and let's call it as a producer and let's create a constructor right click generate and choose constructor and choose this instance variable click ok now we have injected rabbit mq producer by using constructor based dependency injection ok we don't have to use at at all annotation over here again because this spring bean has only one constructor that is parameterized constructor so we can omit using at at all annotation next let's create a rest api public and then return type of the rest api something like response entity and then pass type as a string and let's say method name send message perfect and let's annotate this method with add get mapping annotation all right and let's pass the uri name let's say slash publish well we are going to basically you know pass the message in the url by using query parameter so if you can see the url it looks something like this localhost colon 8080 slash api slash v1 slash publish followed by the query parameter that is message equal to hello okay so in order to get the message from the url we are going to use at request param annotation and then pass this message this message to this annotation over here okay message and then we need to store a value of this message in a variable right so for that let's define the you know variable here string message perfect once we got this message from the url we need to send this message to the rabbit mq producer so in order to do that let's call a producer dot send message and then pass this message to this method and finally return response entity dot just call ok method and then just pass some message in a response let's say message sent sent to rabbit rabbit mq something like this and just put the semicolon okay now we have created a simple publish rest api which will publish a message to the rabbit mq okay great now let's run the spring boot application and let's call this rest api to send a message to the rabbit mq producer and rabbit mq producer in turn will send that message to the exchange okay so let me first run the spring boot application and let me show you the flow now our spring boot application is up and running in a amulet tomcat server which is running on port 8080 let's go to the browser in a new tab just 
टाइप लोकल होस्ट एट जीरो एट जीरो स्लैश ए पी आई स्लैश वी वन स्लैश पब्लिश ओके एंड देन मैसेज इक्वल टू लेट से हेलो वर्ल्ड और राइट एंड हिट एंटर एंड वी गॉट अ रिस्पॉन्स मैसेज सेंड टू रैपिड एम क्यू नाउ लेट्स वेरीफाई इन अ कंसोल सो लेट्स गो बैक टू यू नो इंक्लीज आइडिया एंड इन अ कंसोल यू कैन सी मैसेज सेंड हेलो वर्ल्ड सो लेट्स वेरीफाई वेदर दिस मैसेज इज स्टोर्ड इन अ रैबिट एम क्यू क्यू आर नॉट इन अर्डर टू डू दैट गो टू द रैबिट एम क्यू मैनेजमेंट प्लग इन वो हियर एंड जस्ट लॉग इन टू दिस प्लग इन ओके एंड गो टू एक्सचेंज एंड इन एक्सचेंज यू कैन सी जावा गाइड्स एंड उसको एक्सचेंज इज क्रिएटेड एंड गो टू अ क्यू इन अ क्यू यू कैन सी जावा गाइड्स क्यू इज क्रिएटेड ना वी नीड टू वेरीफाई वेदर द हेलोड मैसेज इज स्टोर्ड इन दिस क्यू आर नॉट राइट सो गो एंड क्लिक ऑन दिस जावा गाइड्स एंड जस्ट स्क्रोल डाउन एंड गो टू गेट मैसेज सेक्शन वो हियर क्लिक ऑन गेट मैसेज एंड जस्ट स्क्रोल डाउन एंड यू कैन एबल टू सी हेलो वर्ल्ड मैसेज इज सक्सेसफुली स्टोर्ड इन दिस रैबिट एम क्यू क्यू द क्यू नेम इज जावा गेट्स ओके यू कैन सी द क्यू नेम इज जावा गेट्स एंड यू कैन नोटिस हियर जावा गाइड्स एंड उसको एक्सचेंज इज द एक्सचेंज नेम एंड जावा गाइड्स एंड उसको राउटिंग एंड उसको की इज अ राउटिंग की ओके नाउ लेट्स पास वन मोर मैसेज लेट से हेलो वर्ल्ड रैबिट एम क्यू ओके एंड हिट एंटर एंड लेट्स गो बैक टू रैबिट एम क्यू कंसोल एंड क्लिक कन गेट मैसेज एंड यू कैन एबल टू सी हेलो वर्ल्ड रैबिट एम क्यू ओके एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो सी द ग्राप ओवर हियर देर आर टोटल टू मैसेजेस मैसेजेस आर रेडी एंड देर आर टोटल टू मैसेजेस ओके एज सुन एज यू सेंड द मैसेज टू द क्यू यू कैन ऑल्सो सी दैट मैसेज डेटा इन अ चार्ट वो हियर फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट मी लेट मी सेंड वन मोर मैसेज लेट से हेलो वर्ल्ड रैबिट एम क्यू रैबिट एम क्यू स्प्रिंग बोर्ड एंड हिट एंटर एंड गो टू रैबिट एम क्यू मैनेजमेंट एंड जस्ट रिफ्रेश सो दिस विल टेक कपल ऑफ सेकेंड सो लेट मी क्लिक हियर एंड यू कैन एबल टू सी हियर रेडी थ्री टोटल थ्री सो गो एंड क्लिक एंड गेट मैसेज एंड यू कैन एबल टू सी हेलो वर्ल्ड रैबिट एम क्यू स्प्रिंग बोर्ड और राइट सो यू नीड टू वेट अ कपल ऑफ सेकेंड्स बिकॉज रैबिट एम क्यू विल टेक कपल ऑफ सेकेंड्स टू स्टोर द मैसेज इन अ क्यू ओके एंड देन वंस यू क्लिक ऑन गेट मैसेज यू कैन एबल टू सी द लेटेस्ट मैसेज इन अ क्यू ओके सो दिस इज हाउ यू कैन ट्रैक द मैसेज इन अ रैबिट एम क्यू मैनेजमेंट वेबसाइट ओके सो दिस इज अ ग्रेट रैबिट एम क्यू मैनेजमेंट प्लग इन दैट यू कैन यूज टू एक्सप्लोर हाउ रैबिट एम क्यू वर्क बिहाइंड द सीन ओके सो ना वॉट वी हैव डन इन दिस लेक्चर वी हैव क्रिएटेड अ सिंपल रेस्टी पे टू सेंड अ मैसेज टू द रैबिट एम क्यू क्यू ओके एंड इफ यू गो टू एक्सचेंजेस यू कैन ऑल्सो सी द बाइंडिंग सो दिस इज द एक्सचेंज नेम दैट वी हैव कॉन्फिगर्ड इन अवर स्प्रिंग बुड प्रोजेक्ट एंड वी हैव यूज जावा गाइड्स एंड उसको राउटिंग एंड उसको की टू बाइंड अ क्यू टू द एक्सचेंज राइट so you can go to bindings you can able to see that binding over here okay so this exchange is bind to java gets queue by using this routing key that is java gets underscore routing underscore key all right i hope you pretty much understood how to send a message to the exchange and how exchange uses a routing key to route that message to the queue hi welcome back in this lecture we will see how to create a rabbit mq consumer to read or consume the messages from the queue well if you can look at the architecture over here so far we have configured queue exchange routing key and we have also created a producer to send the message to the queue right so in this lecture we will create a consumer to consume that message from the queue all right let's head over to the intelij idea and let's create a consumer to read or consume a message from the queue let me go to intelij idea over here let me minimize this let me stop the server i am go to consumer package right click on it new and then choose java class let's give class name as rabbit mq consumer and hit enter and let's annotate this class with add service annotation and within this class let's first create a logger instance so we're going to log the message right for that we need to have a logger instance private static static final 
and then logger from cell 4 g package and logger equal to logger factory and then get logger and then pass the class name that is rabbitmq consumer dot class perfect now we have logger in place next let's create a method public wide let's give method name as consume and then pass a message of type string because we are reading the message of type string right next let's annotate this method with at rabbit listener annotation well make sure that you choose at rabbit listener annotation from annotation package so this annotation we basically use to read or consume the message from the particular queue okay for that we need to pass that queue so here we just need to use its property or attribute that is queues and then we just need to pass you know the queue name so let's pass the queue name dynamically so let's use curly braces within a curly braces double quote and then dollar and within a curly braces let's pass the key so go to application dot properties file and let's copy this key okay and the value is java gates right so we need to pass this queue name so for that we are going to use this property key so go back to rabbitmq consumer and just pass key here okay perfect now this add rabbit listener will you know listen to this particular queue well if you can notice here this consume method is basically subscribed to this particular queue by using add rabbit listener annotation all right so whenever there is a new message comes into this queue then this consume method will consume that message from this particular queue next let's use this logger statement to log this message so here i am going to use logger instance and then its method info and then i am going to use string dot format method to format the message so let's say the message something like received message all right and here i'm going to put a placeholder percentage s yes, and then i'm going to pass the message dynamically to this message okay it's pretty much we just need to print the message to the console isn't it so here received is a typo so let me correct it okay now we have created rabbit mq consumer which will basically consume the message from this particular queue okay next let's run the spring boot application and let's see how this consumer works so let me start the spring boot application and look at here our spring boot application is successfully running on port 8080 and also if you can see here created new connection with this rabbit mq broker by using connection factory instance okay and if you can see the url over here this is the you know rabbitmq client broker port 5672 all right and you can see the guest is the username followed by this is the localhost ip isn't it so by looking into this log statement you can able to understand that our spring boot ap application is successfully connected to the rabbitmq broker which is running on port 5672 okay now let's call the rest api and let's see how producer will you know send the message to the queue and how consumer will consume that message from the queue so let's go to browser and just call the rest api let's say message and let's say demo demo message and hit enter and let's go to console and let's see the logs and there we go message sent demo message received message demo message it means that our rabbit mq consumer will successfully consumed or read message from this queue okay by looking into this log statement you can able to see a received message so in a in a consumer we have written this log statement right a received message followed by message and in a log statement you can able to see received message followed by demo message it means that the rabbit mq consumer that we have returned is working as expected isn't it 
All right, this is how we basically create a RabbitMQ producer and consumer to exchange the messages using RabbitMQ broker. All right, great. I hope you understood how to create a RabbitMQ producer consumer in a Spring Boot application to exchange the messages using RabbitMQ broker. All right, great. I will see you in the next lecture. Hi, welcome back. In previous section of the lectures, we have seen how to use a message of type string for the communication between producer and consumer. In this section of the lectures, we will see how to use a message of type JSON for the communication between producer and consumer. Okay, and in this section of the lectures, we will see how to use multiple queues in a RabbitMQ broker. Well, we have already created a queue named Java Guides. In this section of the lectures, we will create a one more queue named Java Guides underscore JSON. All right. So basically, we have a Java Guides queue. It contains uh, messages of type string we are going to create a one more queue called java guides underscore json it contains the json messages and if you can see the architecture over here we have only one exchange but we have multiple queues over here okay well whenever a producer want to send a message to the exchange it should also need to pass a routing key because exchange needs a routing key to identify in which queue it should you know route that message for instance let's say producer want to send a json message to the json queue then what producer it will do it will pass a json message along with this routing key to the exchange then exchange will use this routing key to identify in which queue the exchange want to route the message in this section of the lectures we will see how to use a json message for the communication between producer and consumer Basically, producer will send a JSON message along with the routing key to the exchange and then exchange will use this routing key to route that JSON message to the queue and then consumer will basically consume that JSON message from this particular queue. Alright, I will see you in the next lecture. Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, we will see how to configure RabbitMQ to use a JSON message for a communication between producer and consumer and we are going to also create one POJO class to serialize and deserialize. We are look at the architecture over here. In this lecture, we are going to create a one more queue called Java Guides underscore JSON to store the JSON messages. And we are going to bind this queue with the exchange using the routing key called Java Guides underscore JSON underscore routing underscore key. All right. So this queue basically we are going to create to store only the JSON messages. Let's head over to the IntelliJ idea and let's see how to configure this queue in a Spring Boot application and how to bind this queue with the exchange using this routing key. Alright, let's head over to the integer idea now and let's go to configuration class that is RabbitMQ config class. Within this class, let's create a one more queue to store the JSON messages. So here I am going to create a Spring Bean, let's say public queue and make sure that you choose Q from org.springframework.mqp.core package and let's call it as json q all right perfect and then return new q and just pass the q name in this case the q name is java guides underscore json perfect so we don't have to keep the hard code values let's make it configurable so here what I am going to do is I am going to copy this these two lines of code and paste it here over here and let's rename this let's call it as JSON Q. Alright and let's also change the property key let's call it as rabbitmq dot q dot json dot name and let's copy this property key and let's go to application dot properties file and just paste it over here and let's provide a value java guides underscore json all right perfect let's go back to rabbitmq config class and let's remove this hard code value here and just pass json q perfect now we have created a method let's annotate this method with add bin annotation to make this you know method as a spring bean all right perfect so let me write the comment over here spring bean for q so
so this queue is basically to store the to store json messages perfect next we need to bind this queue with the exchange right so in order to do that let's create a binding so here what i'm to do is i'm to simply copy this existing comment and paste it over here this should be a binding between json queue and exchange using routing key so we need to create a one more routing key only for json queue so here what i will do i will copy these two lines of code and paste it over here and let's rename this one let's call it as routing json key and also change the property key here rabbitmq dot routing dot json dot key let's copy this property key and let's go to application dot properties file let's paste it over here and let's provide a value something like java guides underscore routing underscore json underscore key okay perfect so this routing key we are going to use to bind this queue that is java guides underscore json queue with a exchange called java guides underscore exchange all right perfect now let's go back to the configuration class and just scroll down and here we are going to write the logic to bind a json queue with exchange using a routing key so here just type public and then binding so make sure that you choose binding from org.springframework.amqp.core and then let's call it as json binding okay and then let's use binding builder class dot bind method so in this case we are going to bind the json queue right so just call this bind method and just call json queue method next we are going to bind this queue with exchange right so just call this two method that is second one it takes exchange as a parameter and then just pass the exchange method perfect next in order to bind queue with exchange we have to use routing key right so in order to do that let's call the with method here and then just pass the routing key so in this case we need to pass a routing json key okay perfect and let's annotate this method with add bin annotation okay i hope you understood so this binding is for binding this queue with this exchange using this routing key but this binding is basically for you know this queue that is json queue with this exchange using this routing key okay so if you can notice here we are using same exchange but the queue is different as well as the routing key is different well if you can see the architecture over here we have only one exchange but we have multiple queues and we have multiple routing keys okay so whenever exchange want to route the message to the particular key then exchange how to use the unique routing key okay just you know keep this architecture in mind so that you can easily write the code all right let's go back to IntelliJ idea now we have a queue and binding in place next we need to create a rapid template such a way that it should support to send a json messages right now we are using the default rabbit template that is provided by spring auto configuration but we have to create a rabbit template you know it should support sending json messages well basically we are going to set a json message converter to the rabbit template so that rabbit template can support sending json message now let's go and let's create a spring bean for a message converter and then we'll set that message converter to the rabbit template so let's type public and then message converter and make sure that you choose message converter from org.springframework.amqp.support.converter okay just remember this package so there are a lot of message converters from different packages but make sure that you import message converter from this particular package and let's give name as converter all right and then return new 
Jackson Jackson to JSON message converter. So make sure that you choose this class Jackson to JSON message converter from org.springframework.amqp.support.converter package. All right, perfect. Let's annotate this method with at spring bin annotation. Now we have written a Java configuration to configure this message converter spring bin. Next, we are going to configure rabbit template and then we set this converter to the rabbit template. So let's type public and then am qp template. So am qp template is an interface and rabbit template is a class. It implements am qp template interface. So let's call am qp template over here and then let's say am qp template and then it takes a parameter that is connection factory and make sure that you pass connection factory from connection package. Perfect. And then let's create an instance of rabbit template. Okay, and make sure that you choose rabbit template from org.springframework.amqp.rabbit.core and then this should be rabbit template equal to new rabbit template and then pass connection battery as a const you know constructor argument next let's set the converter to this rabbit template let's call set message converter and then pass converter so make sure that you just pass this method call so it will return the object of this class isn't it next let's return this rabbit template instance that's it now let's annotate this method with at bin annotation to make this method as a spring bin okay so basically we have written a java based configuration to create rabbit mq spring bin all right that is pretty much it let me recap what we have done in this lecture we have created a one more queue called a json queue and then we have written a code to bind a queue with a exchange using a routing key and then we have created a message converter next we have created a rabbit template and we have set the json message converter to it now the rabbit template will support you know json message for the communication all right perfect well once we configure rabbit mq to support for a json message next we are going to create one dto class for serialization and deserialization right so go to dto package right click on it new and then choose java class and let's give class name as a user and hit enter and let's define few instance variable in this class let's say private int id and then private string post name and then private string last name perfect and let's annotate this class with add data lombok annotation to automatically generate a getter setter methods to string method equals hash code methods and other stuff now we have created a user user pojo class for serialize and deserialize all right great in next lecture what we'll do we'll create rabbitmq producer to send a json message to the exchange and then exchange will use the routing key to route that message to the rabbitmq queue all right great i will see you in next lecture hi welcome back in this lecture, we'll create a RabbitMQ producer to produce and send a JSON message to the queue. All right, let's head over to the IntelliJ IDEA and let's go to Publisher Package. Right click on it, New and then choose Java class and let's give class name as RabbitMQ JSON Producer. Perfect. Let's annotate this class with at service annotation and then in order to pass a json message to the queue we need a exchange as well as a routing key right so let's get a exchange and routing key from the application dot properties file so in order to get the value of this particular key we have to use at value annotation so let's go to rabbitmq json producer again and here i'm going to create an instance variable let's say private string exchange 
and then private string routing json key perfect and let's use add value annotation and here is the syntax within a double quote dollar within a curly braces and let's pass the property key so in order to get the key go to application.properties file and this is the key that is rabbitmq.exchange.name so let's copy it and go back to rabbitmq.json producer and just paste it and let's copy this and paste it over here and let's go back to application.properties file again and let's copy this key and go back to this class and simply replace this one perfect once we got a exchange and routing json key then we can able to send a json message to the queue right well in order to send a json message to the queue we need a rabbit template right so let's go and let's inject rabbit template over here so we are going to use constructor based dependency injection to inject rabbit template so in order to do that let's first define the instance variable private rabbit template and then rabbit template and let's create a parameterized constructor right click generate constructor and then only choose rabbit template variable okay perfect now we have a parameterized constructor all right next we need to create a method which will send a json message to the queue so let's create a method let's say public wide and let's queue method name as send json message so we need to pass a user object as a method parameter well basically we are going to send a user object using a rabbit template and then rabbit template internally uses message converter to convert this user object into json well if you go to the configuration class over here rabbit MQ configuration class we have provided a message converter to the rabbit template right it means that rabbit template behind the scene uses this message converter to convert a java object into json and json into java object isn't it great let's go back to rabbit mq json producer over here and here we need to log this you know this object to the console so in order to do that we need a logger instance right so let me quickly create object of the logger private static final and then let's say logger logger from org dot self for the package and then there should be a logger instance name new not new so we are going to use a factory right logger factory dot get logger and then pass the class name perfect well once we have a logger object then let's go and let's use this logger object to log the message logger dot info and then let's use string dot format method to format the string let's give string you know some string as json message sent and then placeholder percentage s and then user dot to string perfect so this percentage s is replaced with this you know this message and if you can see here we are calling to string method to print this object as a to string next we're going to use rabbit template dot convert and send method well if you can see here there are a lot of overloaded convert and send methods right we're going to use the appropriate method that is first one it has three parameters exchange routing key and object so let's call this method and just pass post parameters exchange second parameter as routing json key third parameter as user object all right so basically this convert and send method send this user object to this exchange and then exchange will use this routing json key to route this user object to the queue okay so this is the meaning of this statement all right it's pretty simple now let's go ahead and let's run our Spring Boot application just to verify there are no errors in a console. So let me go to main entry point class. From here I'm going to run the Spring Boot application. And there we go. There are no errors or exceptions in the console. It means that the code that we have written in this lecture is working as expected. 
all right so basically we have written a rabbitmq json producer which will send a json message to this exchange and then this exchange will use this routing key to route this message to the queue all right perfect in next lecture we'll create a rest api that will send a json message to this producer and this producer will send that message to the exchange and then exchange will use this routing key to route that message to the queue all right great i will see you in the next lecture hi welcome back in this lecture we'll create a rest api to send a json object well let's go to IntelliJ idea and let's quickly create a rest api so go to controller package right click on it new and then choose java class and let's give class name something like message json controller all right hit enter and let's annotate this class with at rest controller annotation to make this class as a rest controller and then let's use again at request mapping annotation to define the base url for this controller so let's say api slash v1 all right next let's inject the rabbitmq json producer so just type private rabbitmq json producer and let's say json producer and then let's use you know constructor based dependent j injection to inject this rabbitmq json producer so i am going to create constructor over here perfect now we have injected rabbitmq json producer next let's create a rest endpoint so here let's type a public and then the return type of the method is response entity and then pass a um, string as a type to this generic class that is response entity class and then let's give you know method name as something like send json message something like this let's annotate this method with add post mapping annotation to handle http post request and let's also provide the rest api uri let's say publish next let's pass user object as a method argument and let's use the annotation called at request body annotation to convert a json into this user object perfect so once we got the user object next we need to call the json producer and then call its method that is send json message and then just pass user object to it all right and then return response entity dot just call ok method and then simply pass some message in the response let's say json message sent to rabbitmq something like this perfect now we have created a simple rest api it will handle the http post request let's run our spring boot application and let's call this rest api to send a json message to the rabbitmq so i'm going to stop the existing server and i'm going to restart the spring boot application and there we go there are no errors in a console and our spring boot application is running in an embedded tomcat server on port 8080 now let's open the postman client so i'm going to use postman client to send the you know post request but you can use any rest client that you want so i'm going to create a new request over here and just choose http post method and then type the url http colon local host all right and then 8080 slash api slash v1 slash publish all right and go to the body in a body select raw and content type json and in a body just paste the json id 1 post name ramesh last name further now let's go ahead and let's click on send button and there we go the rest api got a success response with status code 200 ok as well as this message in a response now let's go to intelligent idea and let's verify the log statement in a console and you can able to see json message sent and this is the user object okay so this log statement we have provided in a rabbitmq json producer if you look at here json message sent followed by the user object
okay so in order to verify whether this exchange you know routed this message to the queue or not what we can do we can use the rabbitmq management console so let's go to browser and just access the rabbitmq management website using this url localhost colon 15672 and just provide the username as a guest password as a guest and click login and go to queues and you can able to see here java gets underscore json queue is created and just click on it and just scroll down and click on get message and you can able to see the json message in a queue it means that the rabbitmq json producer we have returned is working as expected okay and you can able to see here this json message is successfully stored in a queue and if you go to exchange to just you know verify the binding so go to java underscore exchange and you can see the binding over here okay so this exchange is bind to this queue using this routing key so there are total two bindings one is to store the string messages another is to store json messages all right by looking into these bindings you can easily understand that how exchange works behind the scene to route the messages to the respective queues using routing key so very very simple isn't it so that's why I always try to use this RabbitMQ management website to track the you know the messages in a queue as well as the bindings in a exchange so let me recap what we have done in this lecture well we have created a simple rest api that is published rest api it will handle http post request and then it will internally call rabbitmq json producer to send a json message to the queue and then we have verified that json message in a queue by using rabbitmq management website all right great in next lecture what we will do we will write a rabbitmq consumer to consume the message from this queue okay so so far we have seen the message in a rabbitmq management right but we have to write a rabbitmq consumer to consume this message from this queue in next lecture we'll see how to implement a consumer to consume this message from this queue all right great i will see you in next lecture hi welcome back in this lecture we'll create a rabbitmq consumer to consume json message well let's head over to the intelligent idea and let's go to consumer package right click on it new and then choose java class and let's give class name as rabbit mq json consumer all right perfect and let's annotate this class with at service annotation well within this class we are going to write a logic to read or consume the message from the queue so before that we need to create a logger so let's type private static final and then logger from self 4 j and then logger equal to logger factory dot get logger and then pass the class name that is rabbitmq json consumer dot class perfect now we have created a logger instance to log the json message next we are going to create a method which will read or consume the message from the rabbitmq queue so just type public and then wide let's give a method name something like consume json message something like this all right and let's annotate this method with at rabbit listener annotation well we are going to use the rabbit listener annotation to listen to particular queue okay and make sure that you choose a rabbit listener from org.springframework.amqp.rabbit.annotation package all right and we need to pass a queue name to this you know annotation so just type the attribute that is that is queues and we need to pass a particular queue name from which this consumer should read the message right so here is the syntax double quote dollar within a curly braces let's pass the property key so go to application dot properties file and just get this key so make sure that you need to pass this queue name that is java gets underscore json queue name 
so make sure that you provide this queue name that is java gets underscore json queue name because we are going to read or consume the json messages from this particular queue right so let's copy this key and go back to rabbitmq json consumer and just pass this key here all right perfect and here for this method we need to provide user object as a parameter okay and rabbit template will basically convert internally a json into java object now let's go and let's put the log statement here to just log this message logger info and then just use a format method and then let's have the statement let's say received json message and then percentage s and then user dot to string perfect now we have logged the this json message so here is a typo so let me let me fix this typo and there we go now we have written a consumer which will consume or read a json message from this particular queue okay make sure that you pass the correct queue name here okay so in this case we are going to read the json messages from this queue the queue name is java guides underscore json you can see java guides underscore json all right perfect now let me stop the existing server and let me run the spring boot application again and if you can see here there are no errors or no exceptions in the console and you can also able to see received json message well there is already one json message in a queue so that json message will be consumed by this consumer okay now let's go ahead and let's send one more json message to the queue and let's see how the consumer works well here i am going to pass id as a 2 and post name as john and second name or last name let's say Zena and just click on send button we got the response i mean we got the success response go to IntelliJ idea and go to console and here you can able to see json message sent and received json message it means that the rabbitmq json consumer that we have written is working as, as expected because it is reading the json message from the queue right so this is how basically we write uh, producer and consumer to you know send and receive the json messages all right i hope you understood how to write a rabbitmq producer and consumer to you know exchange json messages between them okay great